How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be looking at some of my Scream Factory Blu-rays. We're only going to be covering three today because I like to talk a little bit about each movie and the release of it. Um, only three, but this is a volume one. I have a bunch of Scream Factory movies that I want to get to and I actually have a, a pile off to the side of the camera and uh, that will be Volume 2 and whatnot. So Volume 2 is coming hopefully very soon. Um, and if you want more Scream Factory, I did a previous video where I showed uh, Scream Factory for uh, Hammer releases, and specifically Hammer releases. And hopefully I'll be able to do a Universal one in the near future. Uh, but aside from Hammer and Universal, these are just regular Scream Factory releases. And um, I'm going to be starting off with a John Carpenter Steelbook. This one is Assault on Precinct 13. And this really nice cover, red sun coming in. And you get the gang members running in. The little <laughs> tiny soloed gang member at the in there. Spine, big and bold. And I think a lot of the Scream Factory uh, spines are like that. And then the back, the gang member's legs, and he's dropped the torch um, on the ground there because they all got torches. And then if you open it up, it's actually a big wide shot, and I really like that. And I think a lot of their John Carpenter steelbooks, if not all of them, are like this where they're all a big wide shot. So it's the camera low on the ground, and it's on the street, and you see all the gang members rushing at Precinct 13. Um, really cool, and the inside got a smoke, that's uh, what the main prisoner always said, and then here's this really nice ink wash style drawing of a gang member breaking through the windows, assault on precinct 13, he's there, and oh, you get to see little silhouettes, and a little gun raised up there, of all these other gang members that want to get in. So... Assault on Precinct 13, John Carpenter's second film from 1976. He had uh, made Dark Star previously, which is like the student film that they uh, polished up and later gave a better theatrical release. Assault on Precinct 13, he wrote alongside with The Eyes of Laura Mars. He sold Laura Mars uh, and someone else directed that. He kept Precinct 13 for himself. Which I'm really glad he did, because this is an amazing movie. Uh, if you want to watch this, make sure you get John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13 from 76. Uh, they did a remake in the 2000s, and the remake is just kind of bland. Um, if you've already seen the original and you have like a lazy day, that's probably the best scenario to watch the remake. Um, it's got Lawrence Fishburne in it, so... You know, that's something. But yeah, just I, it, make sure you watch the original. It's this um, guy, he gets an altercation with these gang members and um, barely any energy left. He runs into the precinct where he passes out and Precinct 13 is about to be closed. So there's no one there and it's isolated in this abandoned part of town. And the gang members come in and... It's almost like a zombie movie because they're surrounding the base trying to break in, even though it's not a zombie movie. And they're breaking in through the windows. you got to keep them out. And it's also, of course, because it's John Carpenter, also kind of secretly a Western, you know. Bullets flying in, the cool heroes, and the, the gruff uh, catchphrases. <clears throat> so, uh... A cop movie that's secretly a zombie film and secretly a western, but not really either of those things. A great movie. Check it out. One of his most underrated ones, Assault uh, on Precinct 13. And um, next Scream Factory video, there will be another John Carpenter Steelbook, so keep an eye out for that. Um, up next, we have Road Games. This was from 1981, so you have uh, Stacy Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis just coming off of uh, Halloween a few years ago, and you get this nice cover. I believe that's um, 
original painting for Scream Factory. Jamie Lee Curtis there, and I guess that's Stacy Keach's eyes, and a cloud over this killer's van. And the back, you get a, another photo of Jamie Lee Curtis in her little hat there. And if we slide the slip cover off, that's the movie's regular poster. I think this was a Scream Factory commissioned artwork, and this is the standard poster. This is what you always saw on all the previous releases. Uh, this paper inner um, part here is reversible. <clears throat> so if I wanted to, I could set this part to match the uh, Scream Factory cover. But whenever they have the slip covers, I like to set the inside to the B so I get to see them both when I open it up. Um, and yeah, so see, you can see through it and see the uh, regular cover there. And of course, the disc matches the uh, main cover of the movie where, you know, she's hitchhiking. So anyway, um, Road Games is an Australian movie and Stacy Keach and his dingo are driving a big rig uh, truck down the empty streets in Australia and actually it's a real thing is there's big stretches of abandoned road and well not abandoned but just nothing going on desert road in Australia between towns and he's a truck driver going through all the space and he eventually picks up uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as a hitchhiker and he also suspects that one of his fellow people on the road is actually a killer so it's kind of a murder mystery on the road and you really get the sense of the scale of this road and how big and long and just empty it is um, and you get them trying to solve the mystery and there's really great dialogue in this movie I think Tarantino said it was one of his favorite movies I'm not sure um, but I believe he said that and it makes sense because the dialogue in this movie is super great and well developed in the way uh, Stacy Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis will talk about things. It's just really interesting. So you have a scene where they're just talking and it's, you know, really, really gripping. And then also you get scenes with a killer and it's so cool, uh, mystery on wheels, road games um, from 81. Uh, I definitely recommend it directed by Richard Franklin um, up next we have a Brian De Palma film we have Phantom of the Paradise and you get the original painted cover you get a lot of these Scream Factory releases where they have an A cover and the B cover and the A cover uh, that they commission is usually a character piece where they get you know there's the phantom, and the bad guy, and the girl, and all the rockers there, and there's a tiny little phantom uh, swinging in the in the corner there, this keyboard. So yeah, you see a lot of these character splash ones, collector's edition, and there's the back, he's playing his music, the other two leads. So this is Brian De Palma from 1974. So pretty early, and it's basically a remake of Phantom of the Opera, but rather than an opera, this uh, guy, the villain, has built what he called a paradise, and it's this uh, big 70s rock place. And if you like music, you know, this is, a, this is a movie for you, you know, Phantom of the Opera, but instead of opera, Phantom of the 70s Rock here. Anyway, I'm switching it over to the uh, V cover right now so we can take a look at that. Um, but yeah, this movie was good, uh, kind of strange, uh, but still a really good movie. And I think it has quite a bit of a cult following. And that was the thing when I watched it. Is it was like, wow, this is a really strange movie. Here's the traditional uh, poster for the movie Phantom of the Paradise so a lot of people they love their traditional posters 
and it's really good that Scream Factory gave you that option while also commissioning a new uh, Blu-ray cover for it and even has different pictures on the back. You have the Phantom playing his keyboard there. Uh, now that's the villain and you get the Phantom down here with uh, where he's talking and a different photo of the girl in the middle. Um, but yeah, it's a good movie with a cult following like in this one, his face gets messed up instead of being burned or deformed. It uh, gets stuck in a record press, so half his face has a record in it. And, um, and like the printing of it. And it's really cool and super weird. If you like cult movies, this is definitely it. Um, and early Brian De Palma, too. I talked about Brian De Palma in my Criterion Collection video. I did Sisters, so... Um, I reviewed Sisters there, Phantom of the Paladise here. Um, he has lots of really great movies, and, um, I've also seen, you know, Carrie and Scarface. So I'm getting a little Brian De Palma collection. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, collect more of them and just, uh, watch his movies. Anyway, that was Scream Factory Volume 1. Hope I didn't ramble too much, as always. Anyway, um, Volume 2 coming out very, very soon. Another John Carpenter steelbook and a few other uh, mystery movies. Uh, anyway, I, I love these releases, um, and I'll get to Volume 2 soon. Anyway, have a great day, guys. I'll see you later.